Am I the wrong one for moving out and taking everything? Throw away for obvious reasons. Update. In comments smile and cat taxes. Link 1 in description. Background. I, 30 years old female, lived with a longtime friend, 30 years old male. We lived together for 6 years and known each other for 20 years, close families. He was very accepting that I came with a cat. I paid for everything and legally owned her. He adored her though and would spend hours cuddling her. I owned everything, all the furniture and the white goods because I had lived out of home before, but he had not. He got a GF at the 3.5 year mark and she practically moved in immediately. I still paid half the rent though. She was always very rude to me and clearly didn't want me alone with my friend. There was only one lounge, attached to the kitchen, so he and I would previously watch TV together or just be in the same room while another cooked worked etc. When she moved in that had to stop because I was interfering with their couple time. Her attitude towards me got worse over time and my friends started treating me badly. They would leave sex toys all over the place, watch movies late and loud when my bedroom was right there, glare at me if I cooked during their couple time even though they hogged the TV between 4 to 9 p.m. I got a BF and started spending a lot of time with him. After this things got worse, my friend began locking my cat in small cages and putting her the shower. He also began talking differently to me and leave the kitchen in an absolute mess, mold, to make it difficult for me to cook. I found used condoms in the lounge. It then got to the stage where we wouldn't talk, but all the tormenting was still going on. I decided to leave and started looking for somewhere else. The lease was up in four months, but we had not discussed what we wanted to do. I found out through his sister, and a close friend of mine, that they had been saving up this whole time to move out and would be moving in a few weeks. This was news to me. I couldn't afford the rent by myself. I found a place before they did, spoke to the estate agent and advised them of the situation. Turns out he had not been paying his full share of the rent and she was not listed as living there. The agent did not hold me accountable for any of it. I paid four weeks leave before I left. I didn't tell them when I was leaving and on a day when they were not home my friends helped me pack up and leave. The house was clean spotless. I also took all of my furniture, white goods and kitchenware. So basically everything but his room. I took my cat. After I left I received hundreds of missed calls and messages from them abusing me for not notifying them and taking everything and my cat. Most of his family also messaged me telling me what an ah I am. My parents knew what I was doing, supported me, but have also called me an ah because our families are still not exactly on speaking terms. Not the wrong one, lol. I do love the nuclear option of moving out from lousy roommates. Your assets are yours not his. Take all that is yours and leave him to his sex toy infested display area to enjoy. You've done more than most would do in this situation and made it right by the landlord. Move on and enjoy your stress-free life with kitty cat. Not the wrong one, let me get this straight, your friend was harassing you, abusing your cat and planned to up and leave you with a massive bill for his rent and his unpaid rent and people are telling you that you're the a-hole for getting out of there and leaving him with all of the problems of his own making? He and his girlfriend have made their bed. Now it is time for them to lie in it. It also sounds like your parents are supporting you because they know you're in the right. But calling you the a-hole because his family are taking out their issues on them. They need to deal with the family instead of telling you you're the a-hole because they have to deal with the other family's BS. Also, you could probably post this in one of the revenge subreddits, probably pro revenge. Am I the wrong one for not telling my fiancé about a secret room in our apartment? I recognize the title sounds a little ridiculous. The situation is less so. I was very fortunate to be in a position to buy an apartment straight out of college. It's a weird unit on a high floor of a weird building, but I've got renovated it and made it really nice. One aspect of my home was created just to fulfill a childhood fantasy. A secret room. It's simple, a flush mount bookcase put in the doorway. It leads to what would otherwise be a windowless very large closet or a very small room. I made it into a cute secret lair, reading nook, but with no windows. It never got used. Ended up being more long-term storage. I never told anyone about it, because it was a secret room. I kind of figured at one point I'd tell my girlfriend, Emma, but I didn't want to tell her until I had a reason to. I had finished it shortly before meeting her. I figured maybe one day if we had a kid, I could remove the bookcase and bam, we'd have plenty of space to put in a changing table setup, or a craft nook for her, but I largely forgot about it, except when I needed to pull something out from back there, which is rare. Fast forward to yesterday, Emma, now my fiancé, has been living with me in my, now our, apartment for 8 months. During this time, I've kept the secret room. A secret, it's not like I was thinking about it all the time. I only consciously did something sneaky maybe 3 times since she's moved in. To get Christmas lights, a spare coffee maker, and to put away a novelty item she probably thought I threw out. 
And the reason I was sneaky at those times was because again, I didn't want to waste the surprise on Christmas lights. We've both been working from home lately, and we aren't really able to leave very often, due to circumstances, and she jokingly announced we needed a new room to shake things up from her normal commute, bedroom to living room, so of course I excitedly pulled open our built-in bookshelf and showed her our room. And she flipped out, she is furious at me, she sees me keeping this secret as a major betrayal of trust, given that this is her home, she's acting like I cheated on her. I tried to explain I was waiting for a special moment, but, she thinks that makes it worse, I have no idea if she's being unreasonable or if I am, am I the wrong one? Not the wrong one, it's a closet, not another woman. I couldn't help, but laugh, I understand the Batcave mentality as I am also a guy, but I think it's probably came off more ex-murderer vibe, I wanna say NTA, but logically, everyone is wrong here, it's your place. So what if you have a secret room? It's your secret room. But you should have also told her about it after being with her for so long, maybe a week after she moves in. Not telling her is like you do not trust her with your secret. Which is a bad thing I suppose. Edit. Fix the duration of the relationship. Some people are anal about details. Am I the wrong one for leaving in an Uber after my engagement party? My fiancé and I got engaged a week ago. It was an absolute disaster. I never wanted a party. But my fiancé's mom insisted, and wanted to have the engagement party at a restaurant that is expensive, to me, and made my fiancé pull money out of his saving account to buy a house just so she could show herself off to her family, she, picked a restaurant of her choice, invited her whole family while I was only allowed to invite mom and amp, dad, she didn't even order meals until later, because she was arguing about how her favorites weren't on the menu. Lied to my parents about food and said in her invitation join us in celebrating Jake and Sarah's engagement with desserts and champagne only. She said no kids, but brought Sill's kids with her. She sat in the middle, next to my fiancé, and they were both having a toast without me. I was feeling so uncomfortable and super pissed that I couldn't even hide it. My parents were the first to leave. They were upset. Can't blame them. It was awful. We were about to leave. My mother-in-law wanted us to give her a ride home because Bill left with his cousin. My fiancé said sure next thing I knew, she got into the passenger seat, Sil tagged along and stuffed her kids in the back where I supposed to sit, I found this so damn inappropriate and humiliating, I asked my fiancé if he was serious, I told him I belonged in the passenger seat, but mother-in-law said I was being disrespectful and refused to sit in the back, and threw some comments at me. I lost it, literally called an Uber and told them to go, my fiancé lashed out and called me crazy and told me to get in the car because I was embarrassing him. We yelled at each other, he refused to leave, I got in my Uber as they watched and went to my parents, cried my eyes out, and refused to answer my phone, to spare myself the shaming, it was awful, awful so awful that I regret not leaving early, I hate them all, they're treating me like trash and I've had it, I'm 24 and my fiancé is 27, added to clarify that, 1 she took some of our savings for a new house and spent it on the party, 2 she sat in the passenger seat and wanted me to sit in the back, my fiancé took her side and said I was embarrassing him, not the wrong one. Why would you marry someone who allows his family to treat you this way? Sounds like he's more interested in his relationship with his mother anyway. The party was for the love of your fiancé's life. The problem, that person isn't you. Not the wrong one obviously, and you need to evaluate whether this is something you want to have governing your life going forward, because it will not stop. Your possibly future mill is making sure that you know your place in the hierarchy, and if she's the most important person at, your engagement party backslash it's not going to change. Am I the wrong one for taking my ex-GF off my insurance policy to force her to give me full custody of my daughter? Me and my ex-GF, Haley, have one daughter 15 F. L. I genuinely don't know if I was right to do what I did. Around four years ago, Haley had a very bad accident that ended with her being wheelchair bound. This caused her to develop a lot of resentment towards me. She would get angry if I worked out or played any sports. So, I stopped doing anything physical mostly. We tried counseling for a year and things didn't improve. In the end, we broke up. Ever since Elle was born, I took out a private insurance for me, Ellen Haley. This helped out a lot when she had her accident. Post breakup, I still kept her in my insurance because she couldn't find any work and I knew if I dropped her from the insurance, she wouldn't be able to afford any treatments. It's been two years since then. We have 50-50 custody, so I don't pay any child support. In the beginning, I kept a very keen eye to make sure that she didn't resent hell like she resented me. She didn't, so I relaxed. She is still on that insurance because she is not able to find any job except welfare. I wanted both Haley and Al to be well, 
so I kept the insurance. Half a year ago when Elle came to stay, I noticed that she was very depressed and had gotten very fat compared to before. Nothing overweight, but Elle does ballet and I have never seen her put on that much weight. Turns out Haley forbade Elle from doing ballet because Haley used to do ballet and Elle is just trying to rub her face in it. The same for any physical activities like sports or exercising. With the quarantine, it must have been hell to live like that. Elle pretty much broke down and said that for the past few months, things have been escalating to the point that she is scared to walk inside her own house. She just stays in her room and comes out only to eat. Elle just begged me to go to court, so that I can get full custody. Elle is at an age where her opinion matter in court, but it's almost impossible to get 100% custody in my state unless I can prove incompetency, according to my lawyer. So, I dropped her from the insurance. Elle was supposed to stay with me for the next six months. Haley couldn't get a job. She wiped out her savings as she had to pay for all her treatments. It was getting to the point that she couldn't even afford to get basic things for herself, let alone Elle. I also applied for sole custody. Given her financial situation and the pandemic and Elle's preference, the judge gave me full custody with supervised visitation for Haley. Haley didn't have a good representation at court due to her financial situation. Also, there is a pandemic going on. I left an already vulnerable person without any medical insurance. I know I did what I had to do to protect my child. But I did so by taking advantage of the medical expenses of a disabled woman. Elle is happy. Haley obviously thinks I am a manipulative bastard. Everyone seems to have mixed opinions. Am I the wrong one here? Also, dropping her from my insurance was completely legal. I am not from US. Elle just begged me to go to court, so that I can get full custody. At this point, there are no rules or obligations or important factors outside of this one right here. Your child begged to get out of their situation, you made that happen. That is what a parent does. My hat is off to you, sir. I pity the mother, but she did this to herself. Not the wrong one. Not the wrong one. So not the ah. Uh, your ex bullied your child into unhealthiness because she was bitter. She took her anger at her situation out on her own child, intentionally. You did a kind thing for her even keeping her on your insurance after the breakup at all. She spat on it by damaging the one beautiful thing you had between you, your daughter. You protected a child. Protection of a child well outranks protection of a manipulative narcissist. You did the right thing. You sound like a good person. So of course your conscience will weigh heavy. But rest assured, protecting your child was 1000% the right way to go. You trusted the woman to care for and love your daughter. She broke your trust. You don't owe her a damn thing. Am I the wrong one for asking my friend for a boob voyage party? A while ago, my doctor found a cancerous lump in my breast. Thankfully it was stage 1, but I did end up having a mastectomy. It was a stressful time, and when my friend was over a few days before my surgery, we got on the topic of the boob voyage party from Jane the Virgin. I asked her if she would throw me one of those parties to help me get my mind off it. I thought she would put together just a small girl's night but she went all out. She invited all of my friends and my boyfriend and had an array of boob paraphernalia. It was funny and lighthearted and meant a lot to me to get all that support for my friends. During my recovery, my boyfriend confronted me and said that he hated the boob party, he thought it was tacky, and he was offended that I hadn't asked him to put something together instead. He said that we were supposed to be going through it together and I should have thought about his feelings and the fact that he doesn't like parties and wouldn't want to spend one of the nights leading up to my surgery like that. I told him that I'm sorry he felt that way, but it was really helpful for me and I was the one getting surgery and treatment. I told him I wanted to support him, but my feelings had to take priority under those particular circumstances and the party helped me. He's still angry at me for refusing to apologize for asking my friend to throw the party without asking how he felt about it first. It comes up now and again and he still wants me to apologize. Am I the wrong one? So you went through a life-changing experience and he made it all about himself? Not the wrong one. Not the wrong one, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Your boyfriend is a self-centered a-hole who can even tolerate you getting support in the way you need it for your medical diagnosis and treatment. That he thinks his feelings about your cancer are more important than your feelings is very telling, and I hope you'll ditch his ass and find someone who has a working sense of compassion. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day. See you later.